Hello everyone. Very, very good morning all of you. I hope everyone has connected now. Hope I am audible. You guys can hear me. <clears throat> very good. I'm going to start guys soon. <clears throat> In today's session, we are going to discuss uh, manufacturing science, uh, ME gate 22, set one and set two problems. I would request everyone to join this session. Okay, so that we can start. I am Manika. Manufacturing ka best book kya hai? I'll let you know. You get connected with me. Uh, if you have Manufacturing Science, uh, uh, Ghosh and Malik book, that is one of the best book as well as the Kalpak Jain. These two books are amazing. You guys can uh, purchase these two books and go through that. That will really help you to get good marks in gate exam. Okay. As well as my notes are also sufficient. If you go through my notes, it will really help you. Okay. One minute. I'm going to start sessions. Wait. Okay, guys, uh, please share. Please share this session. Please, uh, Mani Kanta, share this session, everyone. So that maximum number of students get connected with us and join it and get benefited. Let's uh, start. Okay, let's start, my dear. We are going to start, we are going to do this session. See, my dear, get 22 uh, questions that we are going to discuss actually. Okay. Okay, my dear, let's come. So guys, the manufacturing science problem that we are going to do. So here uh, we have uh, some questions on our screen, my dear. You guys can see the question. Which of the following method? This is the, this problem is asked in one marks. Which of the following method can improve the fatigue strength of a circular mild shaft, right? Circular mild shaft we have fatigue strength and circular mild shaft, mild steel means if you have to increase the fatigue strength of a mild steel, what you can do, right? So by which phenomena, by which methods we can actually increase the fatigue strength? Anyone? Anyone? Can you answer that? Please? Will you please answer? All of you. All of you, it is MSQ, multiple select questions. First you answer, then I'll let you know the exact solution. It's a theoretical problem. Anyone, anyone, anyone? I can see your chats, my dear. No need to worry at all.
no one is there anyone sir b c d vijay is saying sir b c and d short pinning yes that is absolutely right short pinning is absolutely right by doing the short pinning we can increase the fatigue strength enhancing the surface finishing yes by enhancing the surface finishing we can increase the fatigue strength that's also good next uh, by reducing the relative humidity by reducing the relative humidity we can also uh, increase that that is very good very good very good very good very good very good now the logic which actually i want to develop see the screen is visible everyone the screen is uh, slightly one minute see which of the following can actually improve the fatigue strength now you have a big screen now guys Uh, what is uh, uh, what is fatigue strength can anyone tell me what is fatigue strength can anyone tell me what is fatigue strength how can we understand this can any one of you please let me know what is fatigue strength anyone no one guys see sir please use other color for writing yellow yellow color for writing <clears throat> see the logic guys in this short pinning i am going to explain you uh, cyclic loading suppose uh, short pinning what happen suppose you have a bar like this suppose you have a bar like this everywhere okay and uh, generally we use short uh, pinning phenomena in casting right uh, cleaning of casting short pinning is used in cleaning of casting if you bombard suppose silica fused silica sand particles are there fused silica sand particles it is fused right you have to remove this silica sand particles how can you remove this silica sand particles to so be bombarded it with the help of steel balls this is the steel balls like this and we bombard it so whenever we bombard it repeated loading is there we bombarded it like this right and the size of the ball is greater than the size of the fused silica sand particles so that it cannot again occupy the same position right that's why the size of the steel ball is uh, greater than so this is your my dear steel balls steel ball right steel balls so whenever you bombard a system uh, with steel balls repeated loading is there then in that case uh, this phenomena is called short pinning and same if you bombarded it with uh, with a uh, uh, with guys uh, uh, like uh, uh, like uh, if you bombard it with uh, with i can say uh, sand particles large size sand particles right coarse sand particles coarse sand particles if you bombard it with coarse coarse sand particles then same phenomena is called same phenomena is called my dear what uh, that is called your uh, sand blasting this is called sand blasting so these are the two phenomena sand blasting but sand blasting actually do not increase the fatigue strength remember that sand blasting and short pinning when you bombard it with a steel ball it is called your short pinning okay the so short pinning actually increases the fatigue strength but sand blasting does not increase the fatigue strength. now come to the now uh, let's come everyone uh, how can we relate this uh, reducing the relative humidity right relative humidity is how uh, related so guys we know very well whenever we increase the humidity whenever relative humidity if you studied this that is phi it is mass of the vapor upon mass of the vapor at saturation condition right 
so if suppose relative humidity we are reducing right if we my dear a, oh one minute sorry re, not reducing it's increasing i thought it it's increasing sorry sorry it's increasing okay i thought it it is increasing it is written okay no problem so guys uh, suppose the right answer is a b d if suppose uh, i am increasing the relative humidity means phi is getting increased so when phi is increased then in that case mass of the water vapor get increased mv and mass of the water vapor get increased in that case uh, humidity is going to increase because the water vapor content get increased uh, which means it can cause the corrosion right and whenever corrosion will takes place so uh, due to corrosion there will be a crack more crack for formation right more crack for crack formation therefore the fatigue strength increases when the relative humidity uh, decreases right so when the relative humidity my dear uh, <clears throat> one minute relative relative humidity decreases uh, relative humidity decreases okay 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 relative humidity decreases that was right 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 okay b c d relative humidity decreases so more crack will be produced so here guys uh, the logic we can uh, we can write the logic we can write it will be like this you can write the logic here uh, the logic will be see everyone uh, r h relative humidity we know very well r h or phi this is your actually in uh, in in psychometry you have studied this mass of the vapor present upon of, upon mass of the vapor at saturation condition right so if we are going to increase right relative humidity if we are going to increase the relative humidity rh then in that case mv is going to increase means mass of the water vapor get increased when water vapor get increased means moisture get increased moisture get increased means corrosion it will uh, because whenever a material get in contact with the water there is a high chance of corrosion corrosion right corrosion corrosion increases and due to corrosion cracks are produced right due to corrosion cracks are produced and uh, whenever the cracks are produced it may lead to uh, increase the cracks so cracks whenever the cracks are produced uh, then fatigue strength decreases more cracks strength decreases fatigue strength decreases right fatigue strength decreases so therefore uh, opposite results we can consider if we if we decrease the rh if we decrease the rh fatigue strength increases if we decrease the rh fatigue strength increases correct this is the logic developed clear so if we decrease the rh fatigue strength decreases so if we decrease the rh so right answer is c c is the 100% correct if we decrease the rh fatigue strength increases correct improve now a short pinning is done now surface finishing my dear so same answer you can uh, same answer you can give my dear uh, uh, whenever you increases the surface uh, finishing so there will be less crack right more surface finishing less cracks are there so less cracks are there so therefore uh, uh, less cracks are there means more fatigue strength is there right so fatigue strength will be more so you can also conclude it in this manner everyone uh, this solution is clear my dear this solution is clear or not uh, in improve surface finishing so if we increase the surface finishing if we increase the surface finishing right less cracks are there okay uh, less cracks less cracks are there so less cracks are there means more fatigue strength less cracks means more fatigue strength okay more fatigue strength I hope this is clear everyone. So right answer is more fatigue strength. Surface finishing increasing, fatigue strength will be more. Therefore, the correct answer for this problem is your B, C, and D. That is absolutely right. Clear? Guys, shall we move to the next problem?
Shall we move to the next problem, everyone? Done. I hope this part is done. Uh, I am Mani Kanta is saying, sir, I have access, uh, uh, but your notes are not there. My notes are there. You can ask the coordinator. My notes are there. Okay. Now, guys, we have this problem. See, this is the problem, everyone. We have this problem. <clears throat> I think uh, the problem is visible to all of you. ECM, electrochemical machining problem. Quite good problem. Uh, you guys know very well how to do the problems of electrochemical machining. What is written here? See, electrochemical machining operations are performed with tungsten as a tool. So tungsten as a tool means generally we use uh, tungsten as a tool in uh, Gatao, gas tungsten arc welding, TIG. And copper and aluminium as a two different workpiece material. Properties of copper and aluminium are given. Ignore the over potential. Assume cur uh, current efficiency 100% for both the workpiece material under identical condition. If the material removal rate of copper, my dear, if the MRR of copper is given 100 milligram per second, the MRR of aluminium will be. So you have to find out MRR of aluminium, guys. It's quite simple problem. So guys, uh, first, uh, first of all, we have given the MRR of copper. So guys, we know the MRR in gram per second. The expression of MRR, you know very well, there are two MRRs. One is your MRR M and second is your MRR V, right? So MRR M, that is material removal rate in terms of mass, the formula is EI by F. EI by F, right? And here the formula is EI by rho F. MRRV, the formula is EI by rho F. So here it is in gram per second. And here it is in mm cube or centimeter cube per second. Right. That is the volume of the material removed per unit time, MRRV, and mass of the material removed per unit time. So here in this problem, the unit of MRR is given in milligram per second. It's okay. So guys, uh, we can use the equation number one. So using this equation for the copper, so case one for copper. Case one for copper, if I am talking about. Right. So for copper, guys, the MRR will be. This is your EI by EI by F. This is the formula EI by F. Right, and MRR we have that is your uh, copper 100 milligram per second. 100 milligram. So, milli, if I convert it into gram, so 10 to the power minus 3. Equivalent weight of copper, guys. Equivalent weight is what? Atomic weight by valency means 63 by 2. So, 63 by 2 is what? You can use your calculator. 63 divided by 2. This we have is 31.5. Uh, 31.5. The current is missing, we can find out current from here. Right, by F. F is your 96,500 you can use. Or you can uh, or you can uh, keep it in terms of uh, F also, right? F will be cancelled out, but it's okay. 96,500 is there. I can use the, uh, the value of Avogadro constant. Sorry, Faraday's constant. So current is here. What we are getting current? Uh, 100 into 10 to the power minus 3 into 96,500 divided by divided by 31.5. I is your 306.34 ampere. This is the current. Right. So in problem, one word is written under identical condition. This is the word under identical conditions which means same current is supplied <clears throat> in copper as well as aluminium. Now case 2, let's come to case 2, my dear. Case 2. Case 2 for aluminium. Aluminium, aluminium. Aluminium is your MRR is equals to EI by F, right? EI by F because we have to calculate in terms of mass. Equivalent weight, equivalent weight of aluminium 27 by 3, that is 9. 
atomic weight by valency so that is your 9 current is your 306.34 okay divided by 96500 96500 so this we are going to get in graph what we are getting my dear uh, please solve this into 9 divided by 96500 this is your 0 0.0285 gram per second right so therefore whenever you multiply it by 1000 so this we are going to get in milli milli right milli 28.57 is there 7 milligram per second i hope this is clear milligram per second done all of you milligram per second 28.57 milli this part is done everyone tell me in the chat box yes sir we got the solution that's good right answer is 28.57 milligram per second shall we proceed to the next everyone 28.57 done everyone Vijay Sai Vijay Sai as well as uh, Mani Kanta all of you tell me I hope this part is done good next next problem that we have next problem that we have guys is a quite good problem see see everyone the problem is uh under orthogonal i hope this uh, on a screen the question is visible everyone on a screen the question is visible my dear everyone tell me size is very small i think tell me everyone is that visible good very good very good do you want to try guys shall i proceed quite simple question quite simple question anyone no screen is visible guys you, you you all are not interacting with me when you don't interact how can i teach you how can i get you know uh, the various uh, tricks as well as the concepts uh, the important formula to solve the numericals please participate please discuss with me you can get benefited by asking me so many questions okay so let's start doing this I hope uh, it is visible. Uh, see what is here. Uh, the question is under. See uh, under the identity under the orthogonal cutting condition. This is what is what is the word written? Orthogonal cutting. So I have taught you the results in orthogonal cutting. A turning operation is performed. Right means it is a it is a problem of orthogonal turning. Make it very clear. It is a problem of orthogonal turning whatever results orthogonal turning whatever results you know in case of orthogonal turning that will be applied in this problem clear is carried out orthogonal turning is carried out on a metallic workpiece on a metallic workpiece at a at a cutting speed of 4 meter per second no problem we can write the given part cutting speed is your v cutting speed is your 4 meter per second okay the orthogonal rake angle my dear the orthogonal rake angle of the tool is 5 degree alpha alpha is your 5 degree okay next is your the uncut chip thickness 
and uncut chip thickness and width of cut no problem uncut chip thickness we denote as t t is your 0.2 mm and width of cut b b is your 3 mm good and what is given in this turning operation the resulting friction okay in this in this turning operation the resulting friction and shear angle okay resulting friction and shear angle means uh, beta is your 45 degree and phi is your 25 degree it's okay the dynamic yield shear strength of the work material tau is your 1000 1000 mega pascal what we have to determine we have to determine the cutting force right in metal cutting you guys may you guys may have studied this topic how to find out the cutting force it's quite simple problem everything is given and this silly problem is asked in two marks right so guys i'm going to tell you how we can do this and there is no use of this data given cutting velocity right cutting velocity is required if you want to calculate the cutting power in this problem cutting force is asked right so guys let's do this so how we how can we do this see see everyone so first of all uh, to find out the to find out the cutting force merchant circle we have to draw you know very well how can we draw the merchant circle i am showing you the merchant circle i am going to draw suppose is a circle just see all the results this is a circle okay and uh, One minute, everyone. See, everyone, this is a circle, and uh, this is your tool. Okay, this is your tool. Tool is like this. This is the tool. So you know very well this is your rake angle, this is your uh, normal to the machine surface, this is the horizontal line, right. Okay guys, now you know very well this is the rake face, so, uh, parallel to the rake face we have what, parallel to the rake face, this is the rake face. I'm just going to draw because you know merchant circle. I have to solve the numerical. So I'm not going to teach you how to draw the merchant circle. So this is your uh, guys uh, parallel to the parallel to the parallel to the rake face. We have the force. I'm making it with a different color. This is your friction force parallel to the rake face. Okay. And now in the horizontal direction the force is your cutting force this is your cutting force okay cutting force clear and you know very well uh, perpendicular to the friction there will be normal force clear this is a normal force and uh, this is the resultant this is your thrust force this is your shear force uh, fn and this is your shear force right like this this is the merchant circle you know very well so i'm just going to draw you you, you should remember this forces okay you should remember now aapko yaad rehna chahiye everyone please so you know uh, this force is what this force is your friction this force is your normal this force is your shear force this force is your cutting force this force is your uh, fn this force is your uh, uh, this force is your thrust force okay this is the actually and the angles if we are talking about this angle is your beta friction angle this angle is your phi 
and this angle is your beta minus alpha right this is actually the merchant circle uh, you can go and watch my lectures on applications where i have discussed uh, how to draw this merchant circle now if you know this merchant circle you can first of all your objective is to find out the uh, how can you find out the cutting force from this diagram very simple if suppose i am assuming this as a a b c d and e in this triangle guys a c d if i am talking about in this triangle uh, suppose uh, uh, c uh, we know the one force the first force that we know is the shear force so in try to develop a relation between the shear force and cutting force what is that see in triangle acd if i am writing in triangle acd okay in triangle acd this is the resultant everyone this is the resultant r you know very well in triangle acd uh, cos beta minus alpha what is that cos beta minus alpha is equals to cos beta minus alpha is equals to cos uh, fc by r cutting force by resultant okay cutting force by resultant so from here we can get the resultant r resultant r is what fc by cos beta minus alpha correct cos beta minus alpha now similarly guys let's move to in triangle in which triangle in triangle a b d i am coming in in triangle a b d in triangle a b d cos phi plus beta minus alpha cos phi plus beta minus alpha right this is your cos phi plus beta minus alpha in this triangle summation of this angle phi plus beta minus alpha this is fs by r right fs by r shear force by resultant fs by r fs by r now now we can conclude my dear uh, that uh, shear force uh, if if i am going to put the value of resultant in this one by resultant one by r you can say 1 by r is this is your cos beta minus alpha by fc okay so here uh, we can write uh, cos phi plus beta minus alpha is equals to fs into 1 by r 1 by r is your cos beta minus alpha by fc okay everyone so from here we can get it right i am writing it here maybe some student get confused see cos beta minus alpha cos beta minus alpha divided by divided by fc so fc is equals to cutting force is equals to shear force into cos beta minus alpha upon cos phi plus beta minus alpha so this is the very important formula i would suggest you to remember it because the same formula the same expression has been asked in isro 2018 same expression in isro exam right this is the formula of cutting force in terms of shear force and friction angle and shear angle right so now if if some of you may remember this then it will be really helpful to you you don't have to draw this merchant circle and get this get this results right if you remember this now guys we know uh, the shear force how can we find out the shear force shear force is actually the ratio uh, it is actually the product of shear stress and shear area so if you see my dear if you see everyone uh, see we know very well that is uh, shear force is your shear stress into shear area 
right this is the actually point i am i want to discuss it here for your better understanding suppose you have to calculate the shear force my dear shear force is your tau into shear area i just want to uh, discuss here shear area in three different categories first is my dear see shear area you can see shear area in orthogonal turning my dear remember that in ortho gonal turning as well as shear area in orthogonal cutting when you do not know actually the machining operations orthogonal cutting so in general if i am talking about in general if i am talking about shear area is tau into bt by sin phi b into t that is width of cut and uncut chip thickness upon sin phi but in turning my dear what happen in turning in orthogonal turning bt is equals to feed into depth of cut bt is equals to feed into depth of cut right the product of b into t is equals to f into d in turning you might have remember this in orthogonal cutting guys the uncut chip thickness is equals to depth of cut sometimes depth of, depth of cut is given to you right so guys the formula will be sometimes we use tau fd by sin phi feed into depth of cut by sin phi we can use this okay so this we actually use in where this we actually use in turning orthogonal and oblique in oblique turning we can also use this this is valid in oblique turning as well as well as orthogonal and oblique turning okay but sometimes guys to calculate the shear force you you have to use tau right feed and the depth uh, guys b b you can use here tau this is the fundamental equation b at the place of b b is usually given but sometimes uncut chip thickness is not given a small t so at the place of a small t you have to use depth of cut so tau bd by sin phi this is also sometimes used right tau bd by sin phi so this we actually use in orthogonal cutting right cutting right orthogonal cutting remember that orthogonal cutting orthogonal cutting right so guys now i am going to use it here in this problem so here uh, what is uh, here in this problem the question is the word is written orthogonal turning so when orthogonal turning is there so guys uh, we can use uh, since feed is not given in this problem you can see feed is not given so when feed is not given we can directly use b into t b is given t is given this is the fundamental right so we can now easily calculate uh, the shear force quite simple always remember everyone the cutting force is tau bt tau bt if bt is not given you can use fd tau bt by sin phi into cos beta minus alpha divided by cos phi plus beta minus alpha cos phi plus beta minus alpha right this is the standard formula guys various standard formula and i would suggest you all to remember this i would suggest you all to remember this clear now put this value and get the answer everyone tell me the answer how can we get it It's quite simple tau is your 1000 b is your 3 t is your 0.2 cos beta 45 degree alpha is your 5 cos beta minus alpha divided by sin phi divided by sin phi sin phi is your what my dear phi is your 25 degree 
into cos phi plus phi is your 25 degree plus uh, beta beta is your 45 degree alpha is your 5 right once you solve you will get the answer let me find it so guys uh, 1000 into 3 into 0 0.2 into cos 40 please use, use your calculator divided by sine 25 divided by cos 25 plus 45 minus 5 this we are getting 2573.40 newton clear everyone right 2573.40 newton clear all of you tell me done this part is done everyone this is the final answer that we are getting Right, cos beta minus alpha, cos phi plus beta minus alpha. Tau bt upon sin phi, cos beta minus alpha, cos phi plus beta minus alpha. Phi is your 45 degree. Please cross check the answer. Phi plus beta minus alpha. Everyone, please let me know in the chat box, all of you. Let me know in the chat box, everyone. Sixty five cos of sixty five into sine twenty five. I'm just uh, cross verifying my answer. This value is your zero point one seven eight six. Okay, thousand into three into zero point two into cos forty. Four fifty nine point six two six divided by zero point one seven eight six. Yes, that is absolutely right. We are getting everyone, no problem in that. Anyone, anyone having doubt in this, tell me. Anyone having doubt in this problem, please just let me know, guys. Done? Done all of you? This problem is done. The cutting force. If suppose uh, in, in the same problem, if they ask you to find out the cutting power, how can you find out the cutting power, guys? You can find out the cutting power. If in the same problem, I modify it. Cutting power we can calculate. Cutting power is your cutting force into cutting velocity. So cutting force we have, uh, this is the value, that is 2573.40 and V is your 4. So this is how we can get the cutting power. 2573, 2573.40 into 4. So this is your 10.293 kilowatt. 10.293. This is your cutting power. This is your cutting power. Okay. This is your cutting power. So this is how guys we can get the answer. Okay. This is the problem and this is the solution. So I would recommend you to remember this formula. The similar question is asked in ISRO paper in 2018 and same has been repeated in the GATE 2022. Clear? Done?
Vijay Sai, all of you, can you let me know in the chat box? Sir, this is done. We shall we proceed to the next problem? Guys, everyone. Now we shall uh, now we guys we are going to going into next problem. See, we are going into the next problem, everyone. See. What is the problem, guys? The problem is uh, a one mm thick tube. What is written here? A 1 mm thick cylindrical tube. A 1 mm thick cylindrical tube, 100 mm in a diameter. Right, 100 mm in diameter is orthogonally turned. So let's understand this such that the entire wall thickness of the tube is cut in a single pass. Okay, the axial feed is 1 meter per minute. Axial feed. A specific cutting energy consumption is 6 joule per mm cube the power required to carry out this operation this is the problem the power required to carry out this okay this is actually the problem guys before doing this i just want to let you know one another another case of uh, orthogonal turning for a hollow cylindrical bar right suppose it will be like this. Suppose uh, this is your, this is a bar, okay, which you are going to turn. Suppose this is the bar like this. And here, Right, this is the bar and it is turned to this diameter, okay. It is turned to this diameter everyone. Right, my dear, this is your initial diameter. Let's understand this and this is your final diameter. Okay, this is your initial diameter d initial this is your final diameter d final if suppose i am using this this is the bar this is the tool orthogonal turning tool with the help of this orthogonal turning tool it is move in this direction right feed f this is the feed velocity right this part is going to be removed this part is going to be removed this part is going to be removed. Clear everyone? This part is going to be removed. So now everyone see. If a small f feet, suppose uh, this is a capital F, uh, I can assuming as a small feet, a small f feet is given. Right? This is in mm per revolution. Usually the feet is given in this. And this is the RPM by this RPM N. It is rotating revolution per minute. So if suppose I just want to calculate the MRR of this, right? So you know very well the expression of MRR, my dear. The expression of MRR, this we can also assume as a D1. This is as a D1 and the a smaller diameter as a D2. So you guys see. MRR, the expression of MRR, MRR is actually the product of uncut chip thickness into cutting speed. That is B into T into F. That is the fundamental expression of MRR. Clear? So here B into T into F. So we know in turning B into T, the B into T is equals to F into D. You know very well in turning. Right? Why? How it equals? I am going into deep discussion. See. B is your width of cut is actually depth of cut by sine lambda. You know the relation between width of cut and depth of cut in case of turning. And uncut chip thickness is F sine lambda. Small f into sine lambda. 
and this is your cutting speed here sorry cutting speed capital b right here my dear this sine lambda sine lambda cancel out so we have this formula we have this formula feed into depth of cut into cutting speed you know very well feed small f depth of cut in turning is d1 minus d2 by 2 larger diameter minus smaller diameter by 2 you know this point cutting speed is your pi into d mean mean diameter into rpm n right because diameter is reducing right f into d1 minus d2 by 2 d1 minus d2 by 2 into pi d1 plus d2 by 2 d1 plus d2 by 2 into n right so guys uh, the mrr expression will be mrr expression is your you can see this is your 2 into 2 into denominator it will be your uh, this is the pi so you can write pi by 4 And here you can see a plus b and this is a minus b a square minus b square a square minus b square into a small f into n a small f into n right so here mrr is here mrr is pi by 4 into here you can write pi by 4 into d1 square minus d2 square into feed velocity right this is the feed velocity f into n in turning it is the feed velocity so similarly guys this is the area you can see this is the area perpendicular to the feed pi by 4 d1 square minus d2 square pi by 4 d1 square minus d2 square is this area everyone see it will be like this this is the area This is the area, right? This is the area pi by 4 d1 square minus d2 square. Clear? So when you analyze this, this is your pi by 4 d1 square minus d2 square. If you multiply this area with the feed velocity, right, with the feed velocity capital F, you will get the MRR expression. But now in this problem, gate has changed. What gate has given you? 1 mm thick cylindrical tube. Here tube is there. In, in case of tube, we know internal diameter is a small d and the thickness is t. So what is the area? What is the area of this tube? The cross section of the tube. Therefore, the area is pi dt, perimeter into thickness. So that is the beauty. So if it is the hollow sphere, if the hollow cylinder, then in that in that case, this is the area. If it is a tube, then the area is pi d into t. Right, for tube. So that was the catch in this gate 22 problem. So guys, now if you want to calculate the MRR in this case, therefore the area is pi dt into feed velocity, right? Pi dt into feed velocity. So now the problem is quite easy. Now this problem becomes very easy to you, right? So here, first write the given part. That's why I just want to give you this. Uh, Thickness T is given your 1 mm and diameter is a small d, the diameter is your 100 mm. Orthogonally turned such that entire wall thickness is removed in one single pass, the axial feed is 1 meter per minute, 1 meter per minute. A specific cutting energy, a specific cutting energy U, UC is your 6 joule per mm cube. Right, the cutting power required. So, uh, to get the cutting power, first of all, we have to find out the MRR, then only we can find it. So, you know, for a tube, the MRR is, for tube, MRR expressions will be. MRR is your uh, that is your area area is your uh, pi d t into feed velocity 
is clear is this clear guys this line is clear or not everyone that is very important right to so pi diameter is your 100 thickness is your 1 and i want to calculate this in this is in mm to so 1 meter is 1000 mm 1000 mm per minute so this is going to be your uh, what uh 1000 into 100 into pi so this is going to be your 314 mm cube per minute right but you know very well while calculating the specific energy consumption the mrr required is in mm cube per second so just divide it by 60 to divide it by 60 we are going to get 52 mm cube per second clear this is your mrr once we got got the mrr a specific energy consumption uc is your nothing but cutting power by mrr cutting power by mrr we have to find out what we have to find out cutting power to so cutting power is your u6 into 5235.98 right so this is going to be your into 6 into 6 clear clear guys so this we are getting 31415.92 what what it is your 331.415 kilowatt right this is the final answer cutting power is this clear this is the final answer i hope this part is done everyone just let me know did you get the solution or not all of you did you get the solution or not my dear tell me good very good very good very good any problem any problem please tell me if you have any problem good now we are moving to the next problem clear now the next problem see next problem everyone now the next problem everyone
in this problem which kind of fit they ask you the type of fit the type of fit between the two matting shaft and hole what kind of fit it is see the shaft diameter is given this and the hole diameter is given this you guys can draw draw easily tell me all of you please try this what kind of fit it is my dear transition fit interference fit clearance fit what kind of anyone find it out find it out please try all of you please try please try this Thing no one is trying now see I'm going to uh, discuss with you the solution this is the basic size line this is the basic size line right this is the basic size line clear so this is your 25 my dear 25.0 so this you can write like this 25 plus and minus so this suppose I'm going to draw it like this. Right. This is your basic size line. This is your tolerance zone for shaft. Your tolerance zone for shaft. The basic size is 25.00 if I'm assuming. Basic size is your 25.00, right? Twenty-five point zero zero. Okay. So here uh, twenty-five. This part is upper limit of the upper limit of the shaft is. See, upper limit of the shaft is my dear. This is your twenty-five. Point zero one zero, and this is your twenty five minus means it, this is going to be your uh, you can subtract twenty five minus uh, zero point zero one zero. This is your twenty four point nine nine. Twenty four point nine nine. Okay, it will be like this. Now uh, here, guys, for hole. The tolerance zone is given like this. Please elaborate this. This is your 25.05 plus 0. Point, uh, plus 0. Point 0.015 minus 0. 0.015. But the basic size is this one. 25.00. This is the basic size. So here, this is a very beautiful question. In this, the basic size are actually different. Basic size is actually different. So we have to shift the basic size to 25.00. So how can we shift that? The tolerance zone is your, uh, uh, the difference is your 0. Uh, 0. 0.030. Right? 0. 0.030 is a tolerance zone. So guys, what we can do? We can just add this 0. 0.015 to upper limit and subtract it from uh, this. Right? So it will be it will be my dear we can if we write it it will be your 25.00 add if we add this to upper limit it will be 0 0.030 and subtract it means it will be same 0 0.030 right it will be like this we have just shifted it okay my dear
clear everyone so here my dear uh, what we can do this is the part 25.015 upper limit is uh, 25.015 so it will be just uh, if, if we draw it you can see it will be like this okay if we draw this if we are talking one minute one minute everyone this i actually want to convert so here uh, if we convert it oh, one minute it is a transition fit that is absolutely clear uh, 25.015 it is and uh, minus 0.015 okay so 25.015 line is lie between these two 25.015 this will be your here right if i am going to draw directly not not required to convert it right if i am directly going to draw it so this you can this you can directly do like this see this we can directly do like this suppose this is your 20.015 line right just slightly above and plus something plus something means it will be like this and then <clears throat> then it will be like this it will be this is the actually line line draw clear and this is your basic size line for this clear so it's okay so here 20 point you can write here 20 point now it is perfect 20.015 and upper part will be your uh, 20 point uh, when you add 030 and this is your 25.00 right so there is a transition therefore the right answer will be you can see uh, tolerance zones are overlapping with each other tolerance zone are overlapping with each other so whenever the tolerance zone are overlapping with each other in that case uh, in that case what we can tell so we can tell it there it is overlapping which means the right answer is your transition fit it overlaps therefore it the right answer is transition no ravi singh your answer is wrong interference how it can be interference when the tolerance zone are overlapping right this is your uh, this is your uh, shaft tolerance and this is your hole tolerance right when the hole tolerance is above the shaft tolerance that is called your clearance fit when the shaft tolerance is above the hole tolerance that is called your interference fit when both the tolerance zone overlap each other then it is called your interference fit okay interference fit okay okay now the next part is now the next part everyone see hi ravi hi hello seeing you after a long time seeing you after a long time now this is the problem this is the problem guys try to do this a cnc work table is driven in a linear deflection by a lead screw connected directly to a stepper motor right everyone can you try this a cnc work table is driven in a linear direction anyone
anyone can you try sir busy in preparation very good very good what was your gate score this year have you been appear to the gate exam Hmm? Right. Six twenty three, you are getting. I just want to do it as a full screen, guys. Okay, guys, now see. Six twenty three, you are getting it's okay. What six twenty three? Oh, your rank. That's very good, very good. Try to improve this year. Try to improve, try to get a good rank this year, okay? Amazing. Good. Please try this problem. Please try this problem, all of you. Please try this. It's quite good problem. NCCNC problem. Very easy. Very easy it is. Very, very good, very good. Try to try to get the right answer, then I'll solve. Sir, score AIR. Okay, that was your score. Okay, okay, okay. So that's not good, na? Twenty-two hundred rank is not good. As per your caliber, that's rank is not enough, right? Work hard this year and get a good rank. Okay, good. Pulse rate being received by the stepper motor. Are you getting everyone? Tell me. No. Okay, now I'm going to solve this quite simple problem. Uh, if you have studied NCCNC from me, uh, it is going to be very helpful for you. Very easy. And uh, see, the given part is, my dear. What is given in this? A CNC work table is driven by a linear direction by a lead screw connected to a stepper motor. The pitch of the lead screw pitch is 5 mm. If you are my student, you know very well that pitch is actually, pitch is actually what? Pitch is actually the displacement of the work table uh, when the lead screw uh, rotate by one revolution. Means it is a displacement per revolution, 5 mm. Per revolution. Okay. Now, after pitch, what we have? The stepper motor completes one full revolution upon receiving. Okay. Uh, the stepper motor uh, completes uh, upon receiving 1600 pulses. Number of pulses is given to us. Number of pulses is given. This is your 600. 
<laughs> work table speed v is given to us that is your 5 meter per minute 5 meter per minute okay if i want to convert it into uh, meter per second it is your if you divide it by 60 5 divided by 5 divided by 60 it is your 1 by 12 1 by 12 okay meter per second clear all of you One by twelve meter per second. Okay, everyone. Now uh, there is no missed pulse. The pulse rate being means pulse frequency is asked. Pulse frequency, pulse rate being received by the stepper motor. Very easy problem. Guys, I have taught you uh, the very basics uh, thing, right? That is your uh, table speed, work table speed we can calculate. Work table speed, table speed the formula you know very well, work table speed is equals to BLU basic length unit into pulse frequency into pulse frequency okay the work table speed V is equals to BLU into F BLU into F maybe you guys aware about this result okay So we know the actually the unit of BLU is that is the displacement of work table per pulse means mm per pulse mm per pulse into pulse frequency is what pulse frequency is your pulse frequency is your uh, that is number of pulses per second right hertz pulse per second so this we are going to get this we are going to get v we are going to get in mm per second mm per second okay this we are going to get in mm per second so this is the result is very important pulse pulse get cancelled now when you use this result you are going to get the answer easily easily you are going to get the answer now guys what is given to you in this pitch is given okay pitch is given to you okay as well as uh, work table speed is given so our objective is to find out our objective is to find out first of all blu once we get the blu then only we can get it right so uh, how can we get uh, blu my dear that's very simple blu basic length unit right so everyone basic length unit blu right how can we get blu everyone it is a displacement so here you can see uh, see very easy See what is given, a uh, pitch is given in one revolution. Uh, see, quite simple. Number of pulses is given to you. So now I am again uh, reading the question. The stepper motor completes, the stepper motor completes one full revolution upon receiving 600 pulse. In one full revolution, the stepper motor, the stepper motor, uh, in one full revolution, uh, <clears throat> the pitch of the leader screw is given 5 mm, which means uh, the work table is translated by 5 mm. So guys, see, one revolution by the stepper motor, right, one revolution by the lead screw. Work table translates by PMM. PMM is means 5 mm. 5 mm translation of the work table. 
right to 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 rotate one revolution the stepper motor 500 pulses are required how many pulses are required sorry 600 pulses are required right 600 pulses are required to revolve it by one revolution so when 600 pulses are supplied the work table is translated by 5 mm so when one pulse is supplied because blu is actually the displacement of work table when one pulse electrical energy is supplied to the stepper motor so it is your one uh, it is 5 by 600 mm that is actually the blu right this is the mm so therefore we can write blu basic length unit that is the displacement of work table when one pulse electrical energy is supplied means 5 by 600 mm per pulse right mm this is your blu is that clear everyone so once we got the blu my dear once we got the blu my dear once we got the blu so once we got the blu table speed is given in mm per second what is that table 1 by this is in meter it's okay it is it is in meter uh, but here it is in mm so if suppose i am going to convert it into mm so this is your uh, 1000 by 12 mm per second 1000 by 12 mm per second okay my dear now put this value 1000 by 12 mm per second so here 1000 by 12 mm per second blu we have blu is 5 by 600 mm 5 by 600 mm into pulse frequency f now guys uh, whenever you solve this expression this is 62 right uh now f is going to be your once you solve this is your uh, 10000 hertz right means pulses per second therefore it is your 10 kilo hertz clear clear uh, ravi all of you clear or not tell me all of you clear or not my dear Ten thousand kilo per second. Therefore, the right answer in this option, if you are going to check, therefore ten thousand kilo hertz, kilo hertz. Right. Done, all of you. Just please let me know in the chat box. clear everyone shall we move move to the next uh, part shall we move to the next part good now this one is again a problem a question see what is this problem which one of the following heat treatment is are used for surface hardening tell me which of the following is used for surface hardening everyone which one of the following is used for surface hardening my dear anyone surface hardening technique right in which uh, we actually do not harden the uh, core we our objective is to harden only the uh, case right uh, like in whenever we manufactured the go gauge no go gauge right so there we only hardened the uh, cases right so guys surface hardening technique so many surface hardening techniques are there annealing is a core hardening technique right isme pura ka pura material hardened hota hai andar se but in carburizing cyaniding nitriding right so carburizing cyaniding nitriding 
कार्बोनाइट्राइडिंग ये सारी चीजें हमारी क्या है ये सब हमारी सरफेस हार्डनिंग और केस हार्डनिंग टेक्निक्स है और ये हमारा क्या है कोर हार्डनिंग इसमें पूरा का पूरा कोर आपका हार्ड होता है एनिलिंग नॉर्मेलाइजिंग क्विंचिंग राइट ओके तो ये ऐसा है आपका तो सरफेस हार्डनिंग टेक्निक्स ये नहीं है मेनली आपका जो कोर हार्डनिंग टेक्निक में क्या आता है नॉर्मेलाइजिंग क्विंचिंग वगैरह हम यहाँ पे लिख सकते हैं नॉर्मेलाइजिंग क्विंचिंग नॉर्मेलाइजिंग क्विंचिंग क्लियर एवरीवन दिस इज योर केस कोर हार्डनिंग and these all are your case hardening this was asked in one marks quite easy clear all of you next problem next problem is from iron carbon diagram it's very very beautiful question from the iron carbon diagram topic next question is from iron carbon diagram all of you very beautiful problem it is do you know the iron carbon diagram everyone what is written here see in fefe3c phase diagram the eutectoid composition is 0.8 weight percent at 725 degrees celsius the maximum solubility of carbon in alpha ferrite phase is the maximum solubility of carbon in alpha ferrite phase is 0.025 weight percent of carbon okay maximum solubility ओके ओके द मैक्सिमम सोलिबिलिटी ऑफ कार्बन इन अल्फा फेराइट इज जीरो पॉइंट जीरो टू फाइव परसेंट ऑफ कार्बन ए स्टील सैंपल हैविंग नो अदर एलोइंग एलिमेंट एक्सेप्ट जीरो पॉइंट फाइव वेट परसेंट ऑफ कार्बन जीरो पॉइंट फाइव वेट परसेंट ऑफ कार्बन ओके वन मिनट लेट मी कनेक्ट इट विद द चार्जेस द फ्रैक्शन ऑफ प्रो यूटेक्टोइड अल्फा इन द अब स्टील सैंपल एट द रूम टेम्परेचर प्रो यूटेक्टोइड अल्फा गाइज प्रो यूटेक्टोइड अल्फा राइट तो वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट द प्रो यूटेक्टोइड अल्फा ओके so guys uh, to draw this uh, to to solve this problem we have to uh, draw the iron carbon diagram and you must have a clear understanding of iron carbon diagram pro eutectoid alpha alpha pro so see i am just going to uh, draw one part of the iron carbon diagram see everyone
C. See, this is the graph you know very well. <coughs> Right, this point is your 0 0.08 slightly, and this is going to be your U tectoid point, and it is going like this. So, this is the point which is required. So, you know very well at this point the phase is your gamma, this point your alpha plus gamma, here your alpha is there. So, guys, uh, here uh, see the temperature is your 725 at this point. And uh, the percentage of carbon at this point, we know that percentage of carbon is 0 0.8, right? 0 0.8 percent weight, 0 0.8 percent. But here in this problem, what is given to us? We have given 0 0.5 percent weight, 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 will be less than this. Suppose 0 0.5 percent will be here. If you draw a vertical line, everyone see. If you draw a vertical line, my dear, from here to apply the lever rule, right? So alpha pro will be here in this phase. This is the alpha pro and here in the bottom, there is alpha total. Alpha pro lie here in this box, right? Remember that. So how to get alpha pro? Just draw a horizontal line in this. Just draw a horizontal line, my dear. Just above. What is written? Just above this temperature. 725 so means the line will be slightly like this we have to place the fulcrum here right and maximum solubility is given to us maximum solubility is what maximum solubility is your at this point so this is your given what is that this is your 0 0.0 0 0.025 percent right and the end point is 0 0.8. So if now you are going to draw the, apply the lever rule, the fulcrum. So here the fulcrum is placed. And the end point, the data at the end point will be like this. See everyone. So here your... Uh, this is your uh, C. This is your the end point is your 0 0.025 percent. This is your 0 0.5 and this is your 0 0.8. Right. So this is your alpha pro. This is the alpha pro alpha P. Right. This is present here in this box. Right. So here this is here you are going to get mass of the alpha and here you are going to get mass of the gamma. But in the problem it is written find the mass fraction of the Pro eutectoidal alpha ferrite. Pro eutectoidal alpha ferrite means the alpha ferrite which is present above the eutectoidal point. This is actually the eutectoidal point. See, this is your eutectoidal point. Eutectoidal point. Right. Pro eutectoidal means the alpha ferrite which is present above this point. Above this point, alpha present is in this box. Alpha is present in this box now. This is the alpha. So we have to apply the lever rule in this. So now M alpha will be the difference of these two by total. So now you can apply uh, lever rule. So what we are going to get M alpha. M alpha is equals to my dear uh, 0 0.8 minus 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.5 minus 0 0.8 minus 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.8 minus 0 0.025 so this is 0 0.8 minus 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.8 minus 0 0.025 this is your uh, 0 0.387 this is the mass of the alpha present therefore the right answer for this sum will be the right answer zero yes that is given in the option this is your 0 point 0 0.387 note down all of you clear my dear very good very few students are watching today 
less number of the students are watching. Why? Done everyone? Good. Now the next problem that we have on our computer screen. See, this is the problem guys. You can see this. Two mild steel plates. Okay, it is a problem from the welding chapter that we are going to do. Welding chapter, quite easy problem. Anyone, you can try this. See guys, I'm just going to give you a diagram of welding for your understanding. See, suppose uh, this is your this is your plate. This is the two plate which is going to get a join, right? Right. It will be like this. See, my dear, these plates are going to join. These two plates are going to join. Okay. Now, right, this is going to be joy. So here everyone, we use electrodes like this. This is the electrode. This is the electrode that we are using, right, electrode. This is the electrode, okay. And it is going, it is going and getting melt and feel this gap, right. It is going to feel this gap. So the electrode feed rate, the rate at which we are feeding this electrode, this you can assume Fe, electrode feed rate, right? And the welding speed, that is your V, by, by welding speed is your V. V is, your, uh, v is the volume now, we can assume welding speed as a, a small f, I am assuming as electrode feed rate, right? Electrode feed rate is a small f, you can assume. And capital F is your welding speed, right? Capital F is your welding speed. <laughs> Clear everyone. Now guys, listen to me. Electrode feed rate is given to you. Now write the given part in this problem. Now write the given values. What are the given? What is given? Welding voltage is given to you. Welding current V is V is your 20 volt. Current I is your uh, 150 ampere. Welding speed capital F is your 5 mm per second. The filler wire of the same mild steel material having the diameter. Diameter of the filler wire is your 33 mm. The filler wire feed rate is selected such that 
this is very important line the filler wire feed rate is selected such that final weld bead is composed of 60% volume of the filler material and 40% volume of the plate material final weld bead is composed of 60% of the volume of the filler material final weld bead okay i'll use this data the heat required to melt uh, the material is 10 joule per mm cube means that is the volumetric heat volumetric heat is your 10 joule per mm cube no problem uh, now the heat transfer factor means heat transfer efficiency this is your 0 0.7 and melting efficiency is your 0 0.6. We have to find out the feed rate in mm per second. Electrode feed rate is a dash mm per second. This is our objective. This we have to find out. So now let's start everyone. First of all, use the basics principle that I actually taught you. Uh, first of all, we have to find out the area of the weld. How can we find out the area of the weld? This area everyone you know very well that this area is your uh, this is your b this area is this area is your b this is your b this is your t right therefore the cross sectional area of the weld if i am talking about this is the cross sectional area of the weld right area of the weld therefore the area of the weld will be area of the weld will be b into t b is the gap between these two and t is the thickness of the sheet this is the cross sectional area of the weld so this we have to find out so how how we can find it out we know the formula that the product of melting efficiency into heat transfer efficiency is equals to hm by hg heat required to melt the metals upon heat generated So here melting efficiency is 0 0.6 and heat transfer efficiency is 0 0.7 right hm is your hm we can find out from here hm by hg hg is your what my dear hg is v into i voltage into current so 20 into 150. So this is how we can get HM, heat required to melt HM. So this is your 0 0.6 into 0 0.7 into 20 into 150. 1260. 1260 joule per second. Right. This we are going to get heat required to melt the joining surface. We know very well as we got the HM, now HM uh, that we got uh, now, HM is actually uh, RM rate of melting into volumetric heat, right, this is your HM, RM is your rate of melting in mm cube per second. So rate of melting we are going to get VH volumetric heat we have that is 10 joule per mm cube. It is your 126 rate of melting is your mm cube per second. Right. Mm cube per second. Right. Once we got this part, RM rate of melting, RM is your nothing but area of the weld into welding speed. Right. This is your 126. Welding speed is given in this problem 5. So this is your area of the weld into 5 into 126. Clear is equals to 126.
This is your 25.2 mm square. 26.5, 25.2, right? 25.2. This is your area of the welded joint, right? This is a very beautiful question. If you analyze the gate paper, this is a very beautiful question, right? Now, guys. Now, this is the area of the weld that we got. Okay, my dear. So now we area of the weld we got and rate of melting we have. Now everyone see. What is given as uh, the information which is given to us as per the question. The information which is given according to the question what is given to us. According to the question, we have the volume of the metal from the electrode per unit time. The volume of the volume of the metal deposited from the electrode. Volume of the metal deposited from electrode per unit time. From electrode per unit time, per unit time, right, is equals to volume of the metal in the joint. Volume of the metal in the joint per unit time. Right, the volume of the metal deposited from the electrode. What is the volume of the metal? The area. Area is pi by 4 d square into electrode feed rate is equals to volume of the metal. So, guys, so here, guys, see area of the weld. Area of the weld, if I am talking about, uh, you can see where we have calculated here. Area of the weld is your 25.6, right? 25 point, and the rate of melting, the total volume of the material which is which is melted, total volume of the material which is melted per unit time, because the unit is volume of the material melted per unit time is 126. What is written here? You can see the Feeler wire feed rate is selected such that final weld bead is composed of 60% of the volume of the filler. Right, final weld bead is composed of 60%. The, uh, the filler material, the filler, the filler wire feed rate is the filler wire feed rate is selected such that the final weld bead is composed of 60% of the filler 60% of the filler final weld bead is composed of 60% of the filler final weld bead so final weld bead jo hai isme 60% kya hai filler so final weld bead ka jo 60% hai final weld bead ka jo 60% hai means 0.6 of rate of melting Right. That is actually your filler material. So here you can use pi by 4 d square into electrode feed rate is equals to 0 0.6 into rate of melting. Rate of melting we have that is 126. Right. 126. So directly put the values you will get the answer. Pi by 4 diameter square is diameter is given to us now. D. 3 mm square means 9 electrode feed rate 0 0.6 into rate of melting rate of melting is your 126 directly you can use rate of melting uh, area is not required unnecessary i have calculated that so we can get the electrode feed rate from here so this is your 0 0.6 into 126 uh, into 4 
डिवाइडेड बाय नाइन पाई दिस योर टेन पॉइंट सिक्स नाइन टेन पॉइंट सिक्स नाइन एमएम पर सेकेंड एमएम पर सेकेंड दिस इज़ द राइट आंसर क्लियर माय डियर ऑल ऑफ यू आई होप दिस पार्ट इज क्लियर राइट क्लियर माय डियर वेरी गुड वेरी गुड एवरीवन तो आई होप सो मेनी प्रॉब्लम्स वी हैव डिड टुडे नाउ आई गॉट टायर्ड बिकॉज कंटिन्यूसली आई हैव बीन टेकिंग सेशंस ऑफ टू आवर सेशंस कंटिन्यूसली आई आई वाज टेकिंग सो नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू एंड द टू डेज सेशंस okay we have done so many problems and the problems which are left uh, we'll do in the next uh, youtube sessions definitely we will do uh, do not need to worry at all uh, crystal clear explanations were there uh, we have seen all the beautiful questions okay uh, guys uh, please try to practice and the way i have solved uh, please revise the iron carbon diagram i have not uh, gone into the deep discussion of iron carbon right just uh, just use the u tectoidal point only because the problem was related to u tectoidal point i have not drawn the peritectic and u tectic point there right so we have seen very beautiful problems from the welding beautiful problem from the iron carbon diagram as well as the cnc nccnc blu uh, very beautiful problems are there and uh, metrology a very good problems then your turning right tube turning a new kind of problem has been asked that we have seen uh now merchant circle cutting force calculation there so many things we have discussed today so i would suggest you to watch this problem and connect with me on youtube if you if you have any queries you may ask me in the in the classrooms okay uh, we will discuss that uh, on youtube as well as classrooms and you can join my courses there uh thank you for joining me and today's session i am going to end here uh, and we'll do uh, some sessions on youtube Okay bye thank you everyone see you thank you bye clear everyone ओके क्लियर
एंड कर दो एंड